The general crypto market sentiment is depression. Now, what if that means really good things are coming in actually the next few months? I've watched markets since I was 14 years old. And what I have seen is that markets most often do the opposite of what most people think the market is going to do, at least most people in the market. And what if that means we won't have a massive blow off top in crypto next year or the year after, but late this year? Now, today, Paul is joining us and we're going to look at the price action in the markets that affect money flow into crypto. As well as we'll look at Bitcoin, ETH, and some great altcoins, many of them picked by viewers of the show. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel and our family. Now, if you're looking for crypto news without context or you're looking for panic selling, FOMOing in, well, you can unfortunately find that in a lot of places, but not here. If you, like me, came into crypto because you realize the potential for life-changing gains over a full four to eight year period, and you're looking for discussions on becoming a solid, unshakable crypto investor, well, you're in exactly the right place and with the right family, the Rainmaker family. Now, the reason I created this channel is because I was once new to crypto six years ago. And back then I was looking for a crypto channel and a network or group that understood crypto as an investment and discussed important things like investment cycles and projects, legitimate projects, and the pros and cons of those projects, the risks and guess the upside if it came together well. And I didn't find that. So we created it. And I say we because it's not just me anymore. It's a family of rainmakers. And already you see them here in the chat. You'll see them in a free telegram group. The link to that is below. And you will definitely find that in our private Patreon group that allows you access to our Rainmaker private Discord, which is where the best discussion info is. There are also other benefits too, but you will have to join us to find out. Do note, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a crypto investor myself. Paul invests in many, many markets and none of this to be taken as financial advice. Well, make it rain on that like button and strap in for the show because Paul is joining us from Definity. Paul, thank you for joining us. Great to be here as always. Such an interesting market we have right now. It's um, poised to move aggressively, I think, potentially. So we'll have to get into it. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see some of the things that are on your mind. You you uh, watch a lot of extra markets, and I found it so beneficial to understand what's going on there. And a lot of times there's a lot of correlation between some of the other markets and crypto. In general, in the crypto space, because most of us focus on crypto, we actually weren't aware of that correlation and definitely weren't tracking it. So I find as you go through the different markets, uh, it gives me a bigger picture on where money flows are going. And that impacts the crypto market significantly. For sure. I mean, it's even in the professional market, you get the same thing with analysts who specialize in sectors and even down to individual stocks very often people just don't look at the big picture of what's going on so um it, that's why i like looking at charts as well not just because i believe that they lead what's going to happen rather than lag but because you can actually get an overview of so many markets in a relatively short space of time it's definitely not a shortcut as some people some people say, I want to look at charts because it makes it easy. Well, nothing in the markets is easy, um, but it does give you a view of, of lots of different things. And I would always encourage people to have a look at what the sentiment is and have a look at what the chart is and see whether the two things match or whether they're at opposite or look opposite. And even a rudimentary understanding of charts can, in my view, help you. Um, but yeah, well, we, we've got such an interesting time at the moment because we're heading towards that September, October. Well, we're in September, obviously, but September, October time is when the market is reminded of the big crashes. 29 was an October crash. 87 was an October crash. And September, we had the Sterling crisis. Uh, I think it was September the 17th or it could have been the 16th. Um, but 1992, the ERM crisis. So a lot of big sort of market moves happened in September, October, which 
is why people get a bit nervous around this time. But I think we've got to put everything into context. Michael Burry, apparently, according to the headlines, I've not looked into any more into that particular trade other than I will refer back to it just because it caused such a wave and a ripple. And it's a, it's a measure of sentiment that so many people jumped on the fact that he was bearish and looking for a so-called market crash, according to the headlines. Now we know that the press gets it wrong and they distort mm -hmm. things sometimes. So, you know, I'm, I, I don't know whether that's an unfair representation of his book um, or not. And, and I'm probably not going to look in any further than, than that. But what we do know is that the it, it did cause a stir. It managed to hit the, the bigger headlines rather than it just being a a message on X and it's just staying among his followers. So it tells me that the market is is primed to catch a crash. And if, when we go look through the markets, um it, it doesn't really look like that's that's gonna happen. I mean it's still obviously possible because everything's possible, but it seems more unlikely than likely. Yeah, in our private Discord, one of our viewers shared a video that he had seen on this guy covering um, the housing crisis. And I watched, I had a front row seat to the housing crisis throughout the U.S. and Canada that was caused by an overboom from about 2000 through 2006. Whatever overbooms, it overbust. But the reason it overbusted was very different from the reasons it might bust coming up, but not quite yet. And Michael Burry almost went broke when he called the short of the housing bubble and crisis then. And, and what led that was they changed the guidelines so that people could borrow money on houses, even if they really didn't show signs that they would pay it back. And it created this housing boom. And so then defaults and foreclosures went way, way, way down because nobody needed to default. They could just put it on the market and they could sell it at an $80,000 profit or $150,000 profit because prices had risen. And so as defaults went really, really low, then even more mortgages were being bought as mortgage-backed securities and it created this big bubble. And this vi in this video, um, it was talking about it, well, it, my mind went to as he was talking about there's this over boom in corporate borrowing because corporate borrowing since, you know, I don't remember the start of it, but it really started blossoming in 2008 has gotten so cheap that they can borrow so cheap and then they can just refinance the debt every four years as it goes down. There's an, a massive amount of borrowing that's happened. It very, very low interest rates, but if interest rates stay high for very long, the amount of default on that is going to go way, way, way up. And then all these corporations that have had record profits, why do they have record profits? Because they've been able to borrow it next to zero and put that money at use when all of a sudden their interest rates goes up and they can't refinance it back at zero or one or two percent. And they have to refinance it at five or six or seven percent their profitability is going to crash, their stock price is going to crash, as well as they're going to lay off a bunch of people. And that would cause the general market to fail. And he predicts that will happen next year. And that even the, the there might be a further bull run later this year. And what's fitting is that is I think Michael Burry sees some of these factors that are going on. And so he's like, OK, I think it's ready to crash now. But keep in mind, he almost did go broke because he called it early last time in the movie The Big Short. If you haven't seen it, you get a chance to see Michael Burry is the character played by uh, Christian Bale. And you get to see that he almost went broke calling it early last time. And he was able to withstand just long enough to be right and make billions of dollars in the process. So I don't think he's wrong. I just think he's early. And um, sometimes when, when you're trading on leverage or you're trading when you're shorting, essentially you are trading in some case on leverage. Um, you can go broke <laughs> in the meantime because uh, the markets can stay irrational far longer than you can stay solvent is the old saying. So, yeah, we'll see yeah. how this plays out. I'm curious to see what you're seeing in the charts, what's happening. That's just my view on things. Understand, like, I'm not always right on things. I'm I'm often right. But always right? Not even close to always right. 
and and still that you know just taking the views i have and the principles i have it's helped me be make really good money in crypto and before that real estate um, because these principles are right and you don't have to be right every time to do well those are just some of my thoughts and what i see right now or the picture that i have of what may be coming together All sure right. thing so so um so with regard uh, that was a, for me it was a sentiment thing as to what was happening with michael barry because he it, as i say it just hit the headlines and it seemed to reflect the fact that a lot of people were looking for the market to go down now i'll jump straight to the vix index which is the measure of volatility in the s p options or the price of them and the s p 500 option prices are falling and are about to potentially break below a massive support here which is where we were before so around it must have been around 27th of july when he made that announcement because that's when this this sort of bounced up but the trend has been down and admittedly from a long-term perspective it is coming close towards some long-term support but the vix index is still very well behaved i think there's a lot of short positions that need to be covered the market is short so therefore it's going to keep going up we're in this triangular constriction um so the highs and lows are getting compressed so we will get a breakout and that breakout could be strongly to the upside and i think it will catch people out if it does do that um so that's just the dow 30 stocks of course and it's not necessarily representative of the broader index which we'll look at in a moment in the s p but we can see that the vix index is hitting lows so that's a, again it's a bullish sign we got the nasdaq edging towards prior highs i still think it's going to break into new highs into next year um possibly before the end of the year let's let's see but that trend hasn't changed i'm, I'm not i'm not bearish i'm still bullish same with the s p it's in this consolidation um bias to the upside no, no change there the rut the russell 2000 is underperforming that's small cap index smaller stocks so they're probably having a harder time dealing with the interest rate moves maybe they've got a harder time of passing it on to their customers whatever it might be that's not necessarily bearish it's just not bullish it's just going sideways i'd like that to break this 2000 level this line's been sitting there waiting to go and when it does the bull market will be in full swing and it'll be a, a big old risk on party but for the moment it's a little fragmented but it's more bullish than bearish so we're staying with that upward trend um we don't need to look at europe because that's all pretty much the same we've just had a ecb interest rate rise it's not going to affect the market if anything it's going to make it go up you can see it's up 1.3 percent sorry 1.6 percent today um the eu 50 top 50 stocks is up even though interest rates are up that tells you what the market thinks of that overall the markets are broadly high and that's exactly what i'd expect same with asia hong kong china is actually doing quite well remember we talked about deflation a while back and there was the deflationary numbers that came out of china and everyone was like oh you know the market's going to go down and it hasn't it's actually gone up since that that release has come out um it's definitely underperforming i mean if we look at the long-term chart it's underperforming the us by quite a long way but it's not in a downward trend either and when the news flow is so bearish i think we've just got to be careful about being short in that environment so for me i i, I like the fact that this um 12288 level is holding so well uh, that was where i was expecting support here had a bounce but trend has still been down from here but it's compressing into some into support what you find near the low or near the reversal points the data looks bearish the news is bearish everything's bearish and then the market just goes sideways for a bit and that tells you that there's accumulation going on so i believe there's a bit of accumulation going on and potentially these will be much higher as we move into the end of the year um as far as the dollar goes um it is squeezing higher we had cpi out yesterday and that was stronger than the market expected which to be honest there had to be some strong numbers in the system somewhere to support why the dollar has been going up so much. I mean, it was, it can't be a one way street because if you look at what happened to base metals and to oil and to uh, commodity prices in general, they 
had gone up a lot about a year ago and with the Ukraine war, everything spiked. But then it came off and it came off very quickly. And things have come gone, gone, gone up and then come down again and then start to rise again. And so it will never be a straight line every every single month we're going to see a weaker CPI. We will get slightly stronger numbers at some point. But the general trend is that this inflationary pressure is being contained. And it's also very conveniently happening in the year before the presidential elections. So when we get into next year, there'll be plenty of room for Europe, for the UK and for the US to reduce interest rates. What a perfect time for all the data to look nice and for the markets to be you know, rock and roll to the upside. For the moment, things are in a smooth upward trend and we're just going to stick with that. But the dollar index is, I believe, close to the end of this move. Um, and it has been a much stronger move than I expected. And remember, I was looking for a break of this 100 spot 82 to say that the trend had confirmed to the downside. But look at how much it rallied back through that number and squeezed to the upside here, it's gone a very long way. That's why when I look at the markets from a technical point of view, there are certain levels where I would have stuck with it if it stayed down. But when the markets stop doing what you expect, for me, I have to get out and wait until it moves back into the direction that I was expecting in the first place. So I would tentatively, I don't like to sell the market as it's rising, but I wouldn't mind having a little go at it here. Um, just another move into it to see if I can, uh, you know, people who try to catch tops are usually trying to be clever and I'm not going to try and be clever, yeah. but I think risk reward, we may be at a point where all the bad news is in the price. The market structure has been very, very short the dollar and long everything else. And that structure from late last week has started to switch. So people are now going long the dollar and shorting everything else. So that's what we want to see. So when positions move too much over onto one side, you've got to be careful. So I want to see that positioning unwind and move back the other way. Part of the expectation is interest rates. Uh, I believe interest rates have peaked in the US. It's just that the, the stock market can see it. The currency market can't quite see it yet. And the crypto market, at the top of the show, Jay was saying that the market is very bearish. I can't understand why. Uh, I mean, I can understand why, but from a market perspective, which is still in this consolidation, and there is pr plenty of reason to expect risk on to be around the corner. And there are positive things like the PayPal thing to focus on. So, you know, I'm, I'm still bullish. I'm still bullish. I accept that we're going to be in a consolidation phase, but the risk on story will gather momentum as this year plays out um, and potentially will really accelerate early next year. Um, and we can probably start talking about the halving again. I mean, we okay, we're relatively far away from it, but time is going fast. So before we know it, it will be upon us. So all the other news, I think, will, will fade into the background when we get closer to that or even from this point on we're, we're close enough for investments to be uh, you know validly looking at that event even though it does seem quite far away yeah and they could start front running it we've we've had such an interesting thing in crypto that i don't know that has happened in the past where main street has access to buying crypto and a lot of wall street has been locked out of it because of the way you had to account for it on your books was one of the reasons. Secondly, there wasn't an ETF, which has become a structure that makes it easy for corporations to be able to get in without massive board approvals. Um, so like just it, as well as just like the fear of their own board, if some of the executives, the chief financial officer buy some Bitcoin, you know, they could get let go by their board because this big scare about, oh, Bitcoin is unsustainable and it's not environmentally friendly. And so if if a CMO put it on the books or somebody in the executive team did, they risk getting fired by either the board or the shareholders voting them out. So Main Street has been able to front run Wall Street. And I'm sure that's frustrating to them, especially as things are being 
those hurdles are being cleared. I've even seen stuff, articles and big papers recently on why Bitcoin is really environmentally friendly. <laughs> and you're seeing this narrative shift that is clearing the way so that Wall Street can more safely put it on their books. And so maybe they front run the bull run. I, I don't know how this will play out. And a lot of people say, well, what is exactly going to happen? And, and nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. But the bets that I've placed are at some point in the next two to three years, and it may be three months from now, it may be 18 months from now, or it could be three years from now, probably we will have another massive crypto bull run. And uh, anytime within that period, I'm really, really happy. You know, if it happens really soon, well, that's great in some aspects, and that's terrible in others because it's a good time to accumulate more while it's cheap. If it happens later, well, darn, it happened later, but that's great because there's more time to accumulate, hopefully, at these cheap prices. I'm curious as to what you're seeing like, and, and what your thesis is because I'm a big believer in what goes up comes down and what comes goes way down eventually goes back up. We've seen such an epic rise in real estate prices and also stock prices over the past number of years. Do you think that'll continue? Because some of that is just inflation happening in that it looks like the price is more expensive, but it's really not because the value of the dollar or the value of fiat currency has actually decreased. And so maybe the rises aren't near as big as they seem and it's more sustainable. Or do you see that some point in the next year, two or three years, we have some kind of cor correction? What's your thought on that, Paul? Well, for the moment, the charts are looking bullish. And whilst cyclically, it might seem that things are too expensive, in market terms, you know, we never say that something's too high or too low because it can always go further. Um, in terms of looking at the, the property market cycle and cycle analysis, we're, we're not at the right time for a crash. It's more towards the end of the decade. So there should be, before you get a big move up, as we got in 2005 to 2006 and most of 2007 the market was running like super super hot and in the the sentiment was i think we talked about it a few shows ago maybe last week i can't remember but um you know i i was in a bank and if you were to say that the market was going to go down you get sort of laughed out the room i mean people literally thought it was laughable that there was any possibility of the market going down that's why you know, I was referring to the Michael Burry um, story because it's very unlikely that you get a story like that gets so much traction when the market is going to go down. It's usually bullish stories that are hitting the, the headlines. You know the the classic contrary opinion theory. So, um, so I don't. I'm not sure that you know. I say I'm not sure. I don't think there will be a crash and I don't think we're at the right time. Everything does feel expensive, but it will always feel expensive. Um, whenever you buy something, it always feels expensive. It always feels out of reach. And that is the problem with inflation. That's why Bitcoin was created in the first place. So as far as I can see, if the Dow's going to break into a new high, the S&P and the Nasdaq are all going to break into new highs. That's a lot of money that's going to be flying around. That that will find its way into crypto. So I, I I think it's as simple as that. Until those charts turn around and sentiment turns the other way, um, and until Main Street, I mean, you say Main Street, there's Main Street or people on this channel who understand crypto and people are, who've got the foresight to say this is a really interesting space and we should be watching it. But the man on the street has really no no sort of skin in the game, or not enough. Um, and until that that starts to accelerate, I don't think we're going to see a big turnaround. So we need to go back to the days where cab drivers are talking about how much crypto they bought. We we got that a little bit in the first boom, and then it sort of fizzled away. Um, but we really need more engagement with it where there there's there's got to be this 
it's a one-way street and we haven't hit that and for me that's rather than looking at will it crash next year the year after or or whatever for me it's like eventually we will see that and when we see that that's the sign coupled with what's going on in the charts so it doesn't feel like this year next year is still too early in a halving and in a presidential cycle that wouldn't make sense so from 2025 we can start talking about it but given that we do this weekly i think we'll we'll have some time to to spot the signs before we get there you make some great points if i were to summarize one of them the market the the stock market and the housing market aren't ready for a massive correction down why because there aren't enough people saying that that will never happen and yeah pretty pretty much is the sign oh that'll never happen if they had only referenced michael burry's story to laugh at him that would have been a better sign that probably it's ready to crash and so the fact that they gave it any credence at all is a sign that it's not ready for that because you're right it it's funny there becomes this euphoria like oh the market's never going to correct down and that's the scariest time and it's hard not to get caught up in that euphoria on the converse of that if you're in the crypto space right now it feels like it'll never go up again in fact i see that in people's comments the layering behind their comments I can tell that those comments are sometimes coming from like, like one of the comments, one of my recent videos and on my mind has been a lot lately that this time is an exceptional time to be here. Yet so many people are thinking about it wrong. Now, if they're even watching any of my comments or any of my videos, at least they're in the space at the right time, but if they're not doing the right things, it's not helpful to be in the space at the right time, other than maybe starting to understand the cycle but you won't make any financial changes by being in the right place at the right time, but not doing any of the right things. And so I've covered a lot of videos on why most people fail. And so some of the comments on that have been interesting. And one said, kind of like in summary, buy now and, and pray, hope and pray is what you're saying. And I was thinking about that and I was like, well, he's not completely wrong because, um, I like to think of it in this type of market that it's a fairly educated guess and it's contrarian theory to be like, well, sentiment is way, way down. Prices are way, way down. What goes down doesn't stay down for forever, though sometimes it does. But when it doesn't is when it's a new technology that will actually fundamentally improve things, which I think certain crypto and blockchain projects are. And maybe 70% of them are scams or tokenomics plays that don't really do anything to benefit. And a lot of those will fade away and go to nothing. But 30%, maybe less of the crypto market is actually creating something that will substantively improve banking, video gaming, other industries, making them more efficient and cheaper. And that those will change things and those won't stay down. Eventually, they'll come back up. But what happens is people get so emotionally beat down that even if they're staying around during this time, they aren't making any of the right decisions. And you saw that in that comment. That's like, oh, in other words, buy now and pray. And it's like, well, kind of. I guess it takes a little bit of faith in cycles and faith that, yeah, what goes down does go up. And so in that part, he's not all wrong. And so, like, do I know that this is going to happen? No. It's an educated guess based on historical precedent and the knowledge that markets do reverse, especially when it's on a cutting edge of technology that will revolutionize the world. And I know that crypto and blockchain will do that. What I can tell you is, is it going to run in three months? Is it going to run in two years? I can make guesses on that, but I don't know. And in fact, nobody does. And, and that's what I do have a lot of fun guessing at it and learning and how to detect the patterns better. But I do, I do encourage people to set things up in a way so that if it doesn't happen for three years, they're still not going to walk out and that they can benefit from those gains because it will come. I did want to address the comments. We are live and Bill Gardner jumped in before we started and he said, first, like, let's go. Awesome, Bill. <laughs> Love you, brother. Uh, Chris Ashby then jumped in. Nice. I'm second. He says, happy Thursday, Rainmakers. Thanks for coming on, Paul and Jay. 
He said he's interested in Paul's take on the dollar continuing up higher, which we somewhat addressed that. Is there anything else you want to say on that? Um, no, just that, look, I'm looking, looking to see where the top's going to be. And for my, I think just going back a, a few steps, praying is never a good strategy. Um, you, you should have your own sort of outlook as to where you think the markets are going in my view, um, make your own decisions. And if you're looking for someone else to convince you to buy, then you're not, you know, that's not really how it works. And that's not, because if it goes up, are you going to say, well, you got it right? Or you're not going to do that. You're going to say, you're not going to say the other person got it right. You're going to say you got it right. So taking ownership of your own analysis and trading is the first thing I think people should do personally. Um, even to the point where don't, I don't mind whether people listen to me or not. Um, I mean, it's nice that people do, and I don't mean that in an arrogant way. What I mean is that it's not for me to say, look, I'm definitely right. I'm just saying this is what I think the markets are doing. And given that, you have a look and see if you agree. And if you agree, then you decide to do what you want to do. And if you disagree, then you decide to do something else. And then the nice thing about the markets is we eventually find out who's right. Um, and that that process of kind of owning your own view is very educational because it, you're taking responsibility for yeah. what happens. And you see, the problem is if you don't do that, then you trade in anger. And trading in anger, I can guarantee you will lose a lot of money because it's it's all about FOMOing it. You will be trading right at the wrong time um, because the market is a game of psychology. And more than anything else, it is a game of psychology. And that's why it looks like it's doing the opposite of what you might think. And eventually you sort of get used to that kind of topsy-turvy way of looking at things and it becomes the norm. So it, it can seem like, well, why, isn't, why is the market, market so illogical? But I wanted to show you the chart of – I want to show you a chart just to give you an example yeah. of – so well, we're talking about the property market now. Um, I should really tell if I can turn off the high low. Let me just see if I can turn that off. High low labels, right? Here we go. So have a look at this chart, right? Just look at the chart. Don't look at anything else. Now you can see what's happening here, right? What is happening here? It's collapsed, isn't it? Right. So this chart has collapsed. Now when did it collapse? It collapsed in, or when did it start to go down? It started to go. It topped out in january 06 and then went down february 07 and in december 07 it had fallen a substantial amount right a massive amount and then it collapsed then it collapsed and then it collapsed again right so what you're looking at is Beza homes so what i'm saying is that now if we look forward come forward to today this has been in a sideways range for a long time now i'm not saying this isn't a I'm not saying buy or sell it, and I would never say that anyway about anything on the channel. But what I'm saying here is that does not look bearish to me. It looks at the best a range, um, uh, sorry, at the worst a range, and at best it's broken out from the range and it's starting to move higher. So whether the market's going to crash or not is not going to come from a signal in the press. It's going to come from me looking at this chart and it telling me that we've hit the high D does that make does that answer the the, the property question because that's where i would look for the answer i'd look for the answer in the most sensitive thing which is the stock market um or the share price of the stocks that are related to that rather than anecdotal even you know what what analysts think because what analysts think compared to what the chart's doing in my view is irrelevant that's a really interesting chart, um, and especially the price action there. Uh, I wonder what was interesting about 2000, the, the boom of like 2002 or the 2002 through 2007 part of it was a lot of it was builder driven. And so as things were going crazy, these builders were borrowing massive money and buying houses. Now, this bull run, it's been different, this, this real estate bull run. 
in that the builders haven't gone all leverage and crazy like they did before. They've been they've acted very differently. And so their profits are yet way up because they yet. haven't taken the risks that they have. And so in the last bull um, market of real estate, um, the builders, many of them nearly failed. Many of them did fail. And they had bought all this land and they had borrowed all this land, expecting to be able to sell at the same level. And so this time around, they're acting differently. And I don't know if the acting differently is because there's more building regulations. So it's just more of a pain or they learned some lessons last time. But a lot of the property boom happening right now isn't coming from new homes being built. In fact, there aren't near as many new homes being built as there was last time. And so some people say, well, because of that, then supply continues to be low and demand is high. And so prices will continue And they're right until all of a sudden it doesn't, because part of what's caused this boom, too, is this Airbnb phenomenon, is that people will buy a second and third and fourth and fifth home and they'll Airbnb it out. What we're seeing in New York is New York has cracked down on Airbnb holders, so they can't do that anymore. And so all of a sudden in New York. Bunch of mortgages are going to be foreclosed on because they can't afford to make it anymore. And that will start then a bunch of properties coming on the market will, that will then exceed demand. And now real estate's local. Maybe that will be localized to New York. Is that a greater trend? Well, it depends on the regulators in the different places if they then follow that up. Like New York, why would New York politicians do that? Well, because they're in the pockets of, and as much as the politicians say, oh, I'm for the people. Look at their actions. That is not good for their citizens. That is good for the hotel industry that does not want to have to compete with the Airbnb people. And so why did the politicians do that? Well, my guess is, and it's just a guess, the hotel industry asked them to do that. And um, and they did. And so they're hurting their people. And therefore, you're going to see a number of foreclosures additional to other things that are going on in New York with more people leaving than moving in. And so then you'll see the housing market there start to really fall and then when it does fall what what there's this cascade effect it also tends to happen from california and that people have less money to then roll in so like people from california were moving to arizona new mexico utah nevada and they were selling their home for 1.6 million they only owed 800,000 on it so they had 800,000 cash they'd come to these other markets buy a million dollar home they would put $700,000 down on it and their mortgage just 300,000. And so, um, you know, they're in a very good spot, but then it drove these other markets up. And so people would say, oh yeah, the housing demand is so hot. But once the initiating place where the money was coming from, once it slowed down, that money wasn't coming from there anymore, the boom across these other states slowed down too tremendously. And then the crash happened. Now, this time it's playing out so different because the builders aren't massively overbuilding. Like in Florida, I saw this in Arizona and Nevada. I only saw it in the video on Florida because I didn't know Florida's market as much. But um, these markets had huge subdivisions that 90% of them were sold to investors. So some of them didn't even have renters in them. They were just vacant and they were counting on the appreciation to out distance what the payments were and they were just borrowing money to make the payments and uh that was a really risky place to be and most of those investors got totally wiped out and burned um this time is more kind of airbnb where they're actually putting them to productive use or renting them out and rental rates have gone really really high why because some of the demand has been taken up by people airbnb the homes out and they're not available for regular rentals so uh it, I'm having a hard time because so many variables have been added into this, understanding how that will play out. But I do wonder if at some point, and, and I like what you said, because that changed my thinking that you're right, that there aren't enough people saying that there's no way the real estate market is going to crash. And there's no way that the stock market will crash um, because that's usually the sign that it's really going to. And there are many people saying that, but not enough of them yet. And so probably that enough of them will actually only come after a much bigger leg higher. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so should we have a look at the Bitcoin chart? Yeah. That's okay. Um, 
so this 25 two, one, two, it's been important, hasn't it? Um, it's, it dipped below it in exactly the same way it dipped below it here. So I guess we should really have put some support around 24, seven, seven, zero, but either way, um, what we want to see is a sharp move up from here that sets off the next trend. Um, I'm going to draw in this resistance line and say that for me is the breakout point. Um, again, it's it's gone up, had a correction. It's sitting on support. This is such an amazing support level. It's massive resistance there. It's bounced on it once, bounced on it again. Um, given the bearish sentiment, I think Bitcoin's trading really well. I mean, the dollar is up a lot. Uh, there's people worried about interest rates going higher. There's a lot of negative sentiment in the sector as well. We're still way up from last year, and the trend is still broadly bullish. So it wouldn't surprise me to see a squeeze up sooner rather than later. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, you know, there's other there's other factors that are coming in uh, that we're getting closer to, and those are going to come into into play and exert their force on the market. So either way, I still think, yeah, short term, maybe this week, maybe next week, maybe in a month, we'll still be bouncing in a range. But bigger picture, it's still looking bullish. And the equity markets are close to breaking out. We'll get a decision there very soon as well. So, you know, it could all be synchronizing sooner than we think. ETH, hit that trend line it's been stuck in this this massive range and so we've had to be patient because look how long it's been doing this for enough to probably shake out a lot of people a lot of, enough of enough people to say well look nothing's going on i'm going to go elsewhere and i'm going to trade something else and as soon as that happens off it goes you know you turn your back on the market and it'll just take off so it wouldn't surprise me if we were you know, within weeks of a breakout to the upside. Um, but certainly by the end of the year, I think this should be um, much closer to 2031 as the breakout level. Um, and once that's happened, as we've said before, this is a big base. Uh, there should be a lot of upside to follow. So for me, structurally, short term, yes, yeah, same story. We're stuck in this range. We're having to wade through this bearish sentiment. But longer term, nothing's changed. Yeah, good points. Let's jump right over to some of the altcoin picks from some of these are from viewers. Some of them I added in because I, I wanted to see the discussion. Like nobody recommended Omi this week, but I added it in because, well, um, I'm really excited about where the price is at. And I, I feel like it's got another bite at the apple. Let's jump over to Cardano first, and then we'll take a look at Omi. And then alluvium, chumbi, and then on. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Cardano is definitely in this consolidation. Um, we had that that sort of spike low here that shook everybody out. Would have shaken me out, to be fair. Um, once the market breaks such an important support, you got to get out. But then we did discuss how. Once it did that, it would probably try and work its way back up, which it did, but then it's working its way back down again. So it's been a bit frustrating. And what we really need to see is this short-term trend turn into an at least an upward trend, which comes from a breakout of a previous strategic high point. And that point is 38 cents here. So if it does that, it creates enough of a signal, a base signal, for me to say buy now there's some good support where we are now there's some very very good support so i'd like it to to be bouncing from here like this to be the point i can't personally step in as yet at this point because um it hasn't made a base and we've still got a series of falling highs so i'd have to say wait for me but I, I, as a project goes, it's, you know, clearly one of the best one that m many people talk about. Um, it did underperform when everything was going up and that was a bit of a warning sign for me because 
it didn't seem to want to go with the rallies as much as everything else. So I want to see it taking the lead and being one of the leading markets for me to make it one that I jump in first rather than one where everything else moves and then I go, oh, actually, this hasn't moved yet. So let's take a look at, at this as a secondary one, if that makes sense. So for, the, for me to get excited in this position, everything else should have already gone. Um, everything would already be rallying and Bitcoin, you know, would be closer to 30,000 or something like that. And I go, whoa, why is this still here? We're going to get a move into the altcoins. Then it would be a tempting buy to say ahead of a move up um, um, where things get picked up that hadn't moved before. But whilst everything's still in the consolidation and given that it had lagged before, I'm going to say it's a wait for me. But this is still potentially... It could potentially be a base. It could turn out to be a base. Um, but I just need to wait for that evidence. Yeah, interesting. And it's fun. So for you, it's a wait. And what I like is we have differing opinions and different strategies for how we approach it. Um, I find it boring when everyone thinks the same way I do. And thankfully, it doesn't happen all that much. I actually find other people's views and uh thoughts very very helpful especially if they contradict my own because if i just lived in a sounding board um that'd be a boring life and i wouldn't learn anything let me add in i'm going to share my screen it's i'm looking at the same thing you are here we go but um what i like is so we had this thing play out here that caused a bottom and then it went way, way up to 45 cents and it's dipped back down into this, what I call a gift area where I, because I follow fundamentals, I feel more confident buying even when the market hasn't really proved that it's likely. Well, I guess it never fully proves, but it does give you evidence that it's likely bottomed and that evidence isn't there yet. And so Paul waits and um, which if you're trading on price, you have to do. Uh, I'm a fundamental investor, so I, I identify buy ranges. What's the zone that I'm happy with? And Cardano is well into the range that I'm happy with. And so I buy and then so I develop a thesis that Cardano is massively oversold and undervalued at these prices. And I buy and then I just hold in wait until the rains come back in the market and everything goes way, way up. And then I start taking profits and people say, well, what if it goes down more from here? And it often does. And that's okay because then I just dollar cost average even more in because I'm still going to wait and see if my thesis plays out. And more often than not, my thesis have been right. And, and the few that my thesis were wrong and the project absolutely failed, well, the gains from the ones I was right on massively outpaced the losses that I made. And it's strategically been a way that I've done very, very well in crypto. And for me, this is absolutely a buy. And uh, it could break down below this and go down lower. And in which case, I wouldn't even be mad. I would be happy because it's already well within my buy range. It would just be like, well, what a gift. I'm going to buy more. And that's the way I think about it. Let's take a look at OMI. And I'm curious to get your thoughts on the price action. It took off and we, we saw some gains and made a run up, but it's been coming back. Yeah. Uh, by the way, just so you know, while I'm, I'm talking about this, uh, you, we're getting your phone vibration when you oh. get a message through. So just, just yeah. be aware. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with regard to omi so we got this breakout um which is was from this base so it started from this consolidation that broke this point zero 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 six six nine four so that was the breakout point the buy point and whilst above that it's broadly a buy but we did discuss the possibility of a strategic um oh, sorry a, a trading kind of correction given that the market had gone ahead of everything else and it's come back to its first trend line support, which seems, it looks like it's stopped there, but given that um, it hasn't actually bounced aggressively from there, we need confirmation. It could come as far as this um, 
0.000730 level, which is the next support, and that's support from this area here. Um, and it's also forming potentially an inverse head and shoulders. So we want to see how far this dip goes. But I'm more interested in when it stops going down, consolidates, and then starts to move up on the next move. That's where I think it becomes really interesting because then we're going to be going for a break of this um, this level here, which would be a completion of the neckline. And then this whole area here would be a massive base. So it's in a buy zone. It's heading into a corrective zone. So it gives you a chance to get in if you hadn't got in before. Obviously, it's not guaranteed that it's going to go up from here, but it's forming a very nice technical pattern. And um, it could just fall a little further. So we can say in terms of trade, if I put my trading hat on, which is sort of one to two weeks, I'd say it's got a bit more to correct potentially. And it we may get it cheaper around the 72, 73 area. But if, if I can't look at it until next year, I'd say it's still a buy from this buy point here, um, which was the initial buy trigger. And whilst it's above that, I would just be sticking with the trade. So one is like, do we add to it? If we're looking to add to it, maybe wait a little bit because it's still in this correction. Um, but from a broader perspective, I am still bullish, if that makes sense. Yeah, what I find is the people that do the best in investing are able to hold contrary opinions at the same time and just change the weighting of them as they see the evidence present themselves. And so that really is a necessary skill for people to learn in order to be good at investing over time. And it's weighing out all the reasons that it won't go up from here and, and might go down and might totally die and crash from here as well as weighing all the reasons why it might do well and then being able to weight them according to what evidence there is behind it in trying to take as much emotion out as we can now oh uh just a sec i'm gonna pull this up on mine I'm obviously a huge fan of Ecomi, and this is all well within my buy range. And I'm super excited. It's been coming back down. I hope so. I have some more liquidity free. I'm probably going to make some more buys in here. And um, yeah, continue dollar cost averaging at this little gift that we have. Prices are down close to 95% from its previous highs. And I think its previous highs, it will far exceed that in the coming bull run. At least that's my thesis. So I'm well in a buy zone for this and excited about this price. So for me, it's a buy. Let's take a look at Illuvium, another one where mm, nice and juicy. I like the price action that's going on. Also, the comments got pretty quiet. Um, I did want to say like there was a big digital comic drop this morning. It was Batman number one. So the the paper version of it released in like the 40s. So DC released the digital version of that this morning. And so I was able to get one. I don't know what the rarity is. There is a way you can actually check the rarity before it's commonly released. And so some people have checked it. So G Money said he got an uncommon one, but not complaining. Anyone who was able to get that drop, because there's only 5,000 of them, um, even if they get a common, they'll probably do really well. I think a lot of collectors in the future will go to the digital collectibles and that there will be so many digital collectors in the future that 5,000 will seem like a very, very small supply compared to the number of people collecting or wanting to collect digital comics. And it is one of the biggest comics historically of all time. Um, Vidiman brings up a good point. Rain, are you aware that IOG just released with Lace on Cardano? You can now stake ADA with multiple pools. The tech on Cardano will be ready for the bull run. It's interesting that Cardano, the tech behind it, is more bullish than it's ever been, the fundamentals. And yet the price action isn't reflecting that. And that's interesting that that happens. I felt like that's what happened the last bear market. And so I felt like as I was loading up on Cardano, I was like, I, 
I don't think I'm missing anything, but this is massively undervalued. But I guess I'll find out if I'm right or wrong. And I was loading up on Cardano. Meanwhile, the sentiment was down on it. And a lot of people were frustrated by the delays on it. And so there was overall a lot of uh, fear, uncertainty, doubt, and a lot of people just crapping on Cardano saying that would never survive. But I, I was, as I was weighing out where it was at and what was going on, I, I didn't find justification for all that FUD. And so I massively stocked up on it and it went 100x from there, went 200x from the bottom. But I, I was I made some mistakes and wasn't able to buy more at the very bottom. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think Cardano's again, massively undervalued and that the fundamentals are very bullish. And for whatever reason, the sentiment isn't funny that that happens, but it does in the crypto space. Um, all right. So the next one on our list is uh, alluvium yeah so alluvium very simply is a wait for me the highs are getting lower in this this structure and it's it's close to some very important support i've put in this support line here uh, 3842 which also is very close to its prior all-time low which is 3777 so i can understand why this is a good area of interest for people but it hasn't turned around yet and being close to support is step one step two is a reaction from that support very least i'd like to see this trend line break um that would be my tripwire to get in so for me it's 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 a wait but it's at an interesting area of support and we'll have to see how it trades from here yeah I'm so for you, it's a way just as you kind of want to see how it does, because if it is going to reverse from here, you'll see signs of that in plenty of time to still buy it pretty cheap. And then you'll be um, ready to move on that. Yeah, exactly. If, if it's going to break this line, where's it going to go to back to, you know, 107. So that there's plenty of there's plenty there to get on board um, yeah. for a bull run. Yeah, absolutely. For me, I get really excited and it seems to be playing out this textbook basing pattern, which I call the W pattern. It has other names like a double bottom and other things, but essentially the way it plays out is like a bigger W. And usually, almost always, this is a little bit higher than this. And it seems to be doing exactly that. And so I get excited as I see this kind of setup. And I get excited because I'm a value investor. Now, I bought a bunch of alluvium land. The way things have played out on how the fuel works and everything, um, sometimes I'm pretty disappointed that I put so much in the land because especially at these prices, I think the ILB token is a much better deal. Now, when the land launched, actually the price of the alluvium token was much, much higher. And I thought the fuel rewards would be different, or I would have definitely allocated some funds differently. I can't complain too much because the price of land has just decreased a little bit, whereas the price of the ILV token has come down 75% from what would have been an okay deal, but a bad time to buy alluvium, down to this period where I get really excited about these kind of prices as a massive gift in Absolutely, this is well within my buy zone. I think Alluvium has one of the best chances to become one of the biggest Web3 games or blockchain games in this coming bull run. They'll be ready for release pretty soon. In fact, they have a beta that you can play that's good and it gives you a feel for it. And the ability to actually own the items that you capture, kind of think of, think of Pokemon allowed you to actually own the Pokemon that you're ca capturing and you could sell them and you could extract that money. And ownership means that you own the item so that if the game maker gets mad at you and shuts down your account, you still own those items. That's what real ownership means. And I'm excited to see, it seems like Alluvium setting that up. Now we've seen with, what is it? Counter-Strike Go, that even partial ownership has been doing really, really well because with the DS Go, loot crates that you can buy the skins that you get out of those like some of those skins are selling for crazy money like twelve thousand dollars some of them a hundred 
thousand dollars, even though it's only partial ownership. And I say partial ownership if they if they shut down your account, you um, lose access to your items and the ability to sell them or use them or whatever. So you don't really own it, but you can for now sell those items in the Steam Marketplace. Now I don't know that you can extract your money from the Steam Marketplace. So if further, it's only partial ownership. But even with that idea. $30 billion has changed hands from users selling the items to themselves and Counter-Strike in the process, they keep 10% of the market or of the fee, basically what's made out of that as fees. So they've made $3 billion in the past two years just from secondary sales of those items which is a phenomenal amount of revenue for a video game. In fact, it's the kind of revenue that I'm sure has the attention of every game maker out there. And they're looking at this idea of ownership and going to be moving into the blockchain space. Well, Alluvium's already here. They've been working on a game integrated with that. They've done some cool things. So fundamentally, I'm very bullish on Alluvium and I love this price. So that's why um, I recommended we include this because I just get so excited when prices hit this. Now, can I guarantee at bases here and that goes up from here? No, there's no guarantees. I don't have a magic crystal ball, but it's well within my buy zone. And so I like it at this price. In fact, I recently bought some more and above this price and that's okay. And I just want to get some more liquidity free so I can buy more of this as well. Because boy, gosh, there's lots of wants I have at these prices and only so much liquid that I have to push around. But for me, it's an absolute buy. Um, let's jump right over to Chumby. Yeah, Chumby Valley. Uh, is that a game? Not sure, but I I think we have talked about it. Uh, I seem to remember the name from before. But um, from a technical point of view, very simply, it's so volatile um, that I, I don't know what to make of it here, really, other than that I think I'd, I'd have to stand aside and just wait until it it um shows a bit more volume um look at these spikes you see that there's lots of spikes on the chart that suggest that it's being pushed around um and the general trend has been down although this potentially could be some form of base but it needs to do a bit more work before it's confirmed certainly a crossover from you know three zeros and 2487 would be a very good double bottom base um from which to buy from um but only with sort of highly speculative funds because as i say from what i'm getting from this chart it's very thinly traded and it's being pushed around in a in quite a strange way so you know if it can be up here one day and all the way down here a couple of days later i don't know whether it's going to be all the way down here tomorrow so volatility is a bit too bit too high um for my liking at this stage but you know it could just be a really small project and that's why it's being pushed around so for me it's a wait for sure and um, but i'd like to hear a bit more about what it does and or reminded what it does if we looked at it before um yeah and see what you think yeah, absolutely. Um, Chumby Valley is a small project. That's why it's getting pushed around so much as you identified. Shout out to Sleep in Comics who jumped in. He got a Batman number one as well. Good job. It, I actually follow Sleep in Comics. He has a fantastic YouTube channel and he covers Ikomi and, and especially the comic side of things. And I find his knowledge so helpful because I don't have a big history on comics. I understand that certain comics have done tremendously over the years, and but my knowledge as to which ones and other things are short. And so Sleepin' is one of the two channels I follow to get a better idea of which comics do well because he's got a background in that. And that helps me make more informed decisions on which comics I'm interested in picking up at this time that there's, I think, a lot of them are massively underpriced. And so I've been buying a lot of digital comics because I think that's an area of the future. But I don't know that much about comics, so I rely on people who do like sleep in comics. So thanks for jumping in, brother. Um, Luke001, he, and he's got the um, VV Superman on his profile. Love it. Cool. Hey, uh, what, what were you going to say? 
No, I was just saying hello to Luke because he oh, just said yeah. hello. So <laughs> let's take a look at Chumby Valley. And so I, I like this nice valley of prices. Yeah, I know. Corny pun. Um, but overall, their fully diluted market cap is three million. And my my friend that runs oh. Game Tro channel, he uh covers Chumby Valley a lot in the gameplay on it. And the gameplay looks pretty good. The team has been working hard. It's hard to survive these bear markets, but it looks like they probably will. And if they do, then, and the game can get any kind of traction in the coming bull market, well, then it will probably do really, really well. I put it in a high risk category, but a lot of what I buy is in the high risk category. A lot of what I have is in these small, fully diluted market caps. And the way that I balance out my risk is I, in, invest across a whole number of them so that my risk is somewhat diffused across many projects because any one of them at this point, in fact, any two or three or four might fail. In fact, another project, the high risk project I invest in freeway token, it seems like uh, they're probably dead. Um, and that's part of being an investor is that sometimes they, and I'll have lost a lot on that one. And that's okay. I knew going in that there was always some risk that it could fail. And some projects do fail. Now, hopefully Chumbi Valley doesn't, but I always go in with awareness. I hold two contrary theories. If they stay around, they'll probably do well in the coming bull run that too much money will come in. The pendulum will swing too far to the upside, but they might also fail in the meantime. We're not getting enough traction, maybe run out of funding or can't get more funding, or they spend through the, the money that they've already raised and they crash down and go broke. And so what I'm hoping for is that it survives. And so I like this one for me, it's a buy at this price. Now it could go lower. Cool. Um, might go lower. That's all right. Um, it's well within a buy zone for me. Take a look at NTX and Iagon. Both of these um, related to the Cardano ecosystem. Yeah, so the data I've got here is pretty much that we're in a range. Um, the the main peaks of this have been lower. So again, I'm that puts me slightly on the defensive as far as where it's going to go in terms of a breakout. Um, I need that line to break for it to be in a strategic bull market. What's nice about it is it's close to support. And it's holding in here. So that's one positive, but it's not enough for me to want to buy it. Um, it. It's not very far away from the support, which kind of works two ways. It means that buyers might come in and confirm it as support, in which case, great. Then we can start moving up to the category of what does what else does it need to do before we buy it? But it could also break it, in which case people will start dumping it um because it breaks support so i would tread carefully here um definitely a wait for me um whilst it's at this important sort of crossroads at this point <clears throat> i just wanted to show we had a double bottom a breakout so here at five cents it would have been a buy for me but very quickly we came back below the line i give it a little bit of leeway especially when it's a um a less or thinly traded market that if it breaks back below the line you know i give it a bit of room to do that and confirm whether it was just testing it and then it goes back up again but it traded enough below that to warrant exiting and moving to a new neutral position so from here it's still a neutral position it hasn't shown anything at this point to say that it's a rebuy um but certainly if this support holds and it breaks this trend line it will look much much better but for the moment i'm i'm on a no so at the moment i'm on a wait there we go yeah. press the wrong button it's okay <laughs> <laughs> and you're like wait wait no it is a wait <laughs> yes absolutely within uh the way paul looks at it it's a wait now even myself it's probably a wait for me and the reason is I like this one. It's not as cheap as it was. And it got really cheap. And I like inexpensive. Now, do I believe in this project long term? Yes. I like the team behind it. I had them on the channel before. Um, 
one of the people that's advising them is Dr. Ben Gorsel, which is one of the leading um, data people or research people for AI. In fact, they call him the godfather of AI, like a brilliant guy. He looked like the guy, if, if you've seen Ready Player One, like the guy who create created that game, he looks and acts just like that guy. Um, he's a brilliant man and one of the leaders in AI technology. And so he's been um, having his backing endorsement as an advisor in, and his help um, bolsters the strength of this project. Uh, I just, it's just not as cheap as it was. And sometimes I get biased because of that. So it's still three times up or four times up. So a four X up over where it was here. And so this probably isn't a bad price and the market cap still at just 18 million. Now I held a bunch of this and I sold it near these tops. In fact, it did go higher than this, but I sold some on the way up. In fact, I think I sold some at 11 cents and 13 cents and then had the rest of it. When I saw it coming this way, I just went ahead and cashed out the rest because everything else I had was down. And I rolled that into other stuff that was cheap. Um, but it's it's still only at 3.4 cents. And I would love to see it come back down lower for it to be a buy. And maybe it doesn't get there. Um, and if it doesn't, that's okay. I'll just buy other things that I know that are cheaper. And so for me, uh, I'm clicking all the wrong buttons right now. I do need, gosh, I need more caffeine. <laughs> I'll, pick, I'll get some in just a sec. All right, um, let's take a look now at um, Iagon. Yeah. So this looks very different, as you can as you can see here. Um, it's uh, it's basically had had its base and it's moved up aggressively. We've got this very strong impulsive move. And it's consolidating. Now, that's not surprising because it's really moving up against everything else. So um, the question is, do we, if you bought it, do you hold it? I would say yes. Um, if I haven't got it, would I buy it? Uh, I possibly would. Um, but I would like to see this line break because, and the reason for that is a lot of the markets that we've seen like this that have had very strong moves have then fallen back down. And with the broader market still not quite turning around yet, but although that's possible, I think we've just got to be a little bit cautious that this might come back before it goes up again. So I think we could, I could possibly get it a bit cheaper so I'd wait. But structurally, that is a very strong move. And a retracement would be expected anyway because things don't go up in a straight line but overall whilst whilst it's above 1.6 cents that's a that is a base there so it's strategically a buy so long term for me um but i just think short term we just need to i would need to to see whether it wants to come off a little bit bit of profit taking and then go back up and especially with more thinly traded products you tend to get a big pullback when they move they move fast so I, i'd be braced for a potential correction but you know it's doing it's stand it's a standout market so it's definitely worth looking at yeah th this is an interesting one but it would be a scary one for me to be buying in i already have a lot of this so i did take some profits on it when it went up here and so for me that was definitely a take profit zone i took some profits i have some more and I've considered selling them. It's still not a bad price to sell at. But my thought is in the future that this is worth a heck of a lot more than it is now. So it's definitely not a buy price for me. It's just there's so many alternatives that I think are cheaper right now that that they are a good buy. So for me, this is a wait. It's not a sell anymore as I'm, I'm just holding my Iagon myself. Now, the project, they did a good job. Um, first, they released their token as an ERC-20. They were able to convert it over to a Cardano native token. Now, back when they released, I don't even know that Cardano native tokens were yet available on the Cardano mainnet. But 
Um, so they converted over their tokens, and so they are now native on Cardano. And you can see that they're now tradable on MinSwap, which is one of the biggest DEXs on Cardano's network. Um, so that's an easy place to get it. The transaction costs are really cheap to do that, but you've got to have like a your Roy wallet or some other Cardano wallet to be able to swap on it. But that's what I use is min swap. And there's plenty of liquidity there for most of the Cardano native tokens I'm interested in. So for me, it's just a wait. Um, this project, I hope to see it do well. It's market cap is at 18 million, which is higher than a lot of the stuff that I am picking up. Now I have mentioned that I'm going to be buying probably more Alluvium and more Komi, and both of those market caps are considerably higher than this. For me, those are like blue chips, even though they're not true blue chips and true blue chips market caps are a heck of a lot higher. But for me, um, I, I just like where the price is at. And I feel like their risk is lower than something where Iagon's at. Iagon is still in the substantial risk category and this price isn't cheap like it was. It was massively down here and still the prices are from these lows, the prices are way, way up from there. In fact, that's a, from these lows, the price is almost a 20 X up. So just, yeah, for me, I, I'd rather wait. I would, I'm not adding into my position. And that's just my personal preference. Paul iterated earlier how important it is that you make your own decisions. You're never buying because rain likes something or Paul likes something because really um, you're not going to learn anything. If, if it goes wrong, you'll think, oh, rain was wrong. Well, then what value is that? The goal for people to really be able to make good money in this is to learn how to make decisions for yourself because I'm not here to give anyone financial advice or to give anyone picks that they should buy. My What I share mostly is what I'm buying and why because I want people to learn different ways of thinking about this so that they become and we create a family of sophisticated investors that networks well together so that they can share analysis with other people. So over time, you get very, very, very good at this. And that skill set will make you, it's that skill set that will make you rich. It won't be luck. And um, that skill set becomes very valuable that then you could get work in other places. You won't need to work at other places. You'll probably be able to be financially free over time through crypto if you learn to become a very good investor. And that's my goal with the audience for this channel. And that's why I cover the things I do in the way that I do. And that's why I absolutely adore having Paul on. Um, first of all, because we don't agree on everything, but Paul always has a sincere based logic based approach to what he does and how he does it, which I think is some of the best information you can be getting. All right, let's jump on to the next one. Um, so Iagon's a wait for me. And our next one is V launch. This came from one of our viewers as a suggestion. Yeah. So um, again, this is one which it's quite a strange looking chart in the sense that whereas the other one, Chubby Valley had lots of spikes. This seems to have, very strange way of trading it's like when it's moving in one direction it just keeps moving and then we got this big spike and then it's just continually moving in a very smooth trend downwards um if we take the history back to where it started which is jan 22 very very smooth downward trend uh, almost a one-way street then it started to base and then it broke through the low that continued Obviously, there was some announcement. Some people woke up to the the value, and it's had this big rally. So we've got this resistance line coming across here that's stopped each rally. Now it's going down again. Um, the question is for me: Where does it become a potential buy? It would be a buy once it's completed a breakout of this resistance point, which is rising, but. You know, given its history, there is a chance it will just go straight up because it has done that before. So I'm not sure I would get time to to buy it at super cheap levels, but I wouldn't. I don't mind that if it's telling me that this is a much bigger base. So 
the advantage of analyzing the difference between this really strong downward trend and this sideways range is at least we know that from sort of October, um, November, about a year, it's been going sideways, which is better than it going down. It's potentially basing here, but in order to complete the base, it needs to start to go up and around five cents is where the breakout point is. So it's definitely a wait. I'd be interested in what it does. And, you know, we can, we can tell that it's a very small project, um, but it, it needs what we'd really like, of course, is the opposite of this. It be it trending up in a really smooth way. Once it starts doing that, fantastic. We'll get aboard, but it's not actually there yet. Yeah. I, I'm excited about where the price is. Obviously it got cheaper earlier and it's no longer as cheap as it was. It was all the way down at his price, but it's not very far from there. It's highs just after launch was $2.24. So it is down gosh, almost 99%. That's amazing. So let's look at some other important numbers. Okay, the self-reported circulating supply looks like only 29% is in circulation. Okay, that's a little bit of concern. What kind of token vesting is going on with this? Um, and I don't know what that looks like, what the token vesting schedule looks like. I did see the token vesting on this schedule, but it was, gosh, a couple of years ago. And I don't recall what kind of vesting it had. I look at hundreds and thousands of projects. So I, I don't remember what that looked like. Um, I do like this, a little bit of a fundamental background on this. When I was, <laughs> this goes back to my crypto youth. So 2017, I'm a new crypto investor trying to figure things out. Now I had a big background in real estate investing, understood real estate like the back of my hand, at least I think so, um, was very, very good at it and helped, uh, I don't know, companies make millions by buying well. So I get into crypto and I'm looking for good YouTube channels and I find this channel by this young German guy called MM Crypto. And he's got a background in economics. So he dropped out of the university after a year and a half and he was working as a cab driver. But he'd been in crypto for a little while and he would deeply fundamentally research everything. In his channel, he didn't release a whole lot of videos, but when he did release them, they were longer and he went into depth on the research he had done on these projects. Well, Chris from MM Crypto is now a billionaire from <laughs> just um, literally, so the 2017 cycle, he was well prepared for it before it happened and already had his YouTube channel. So he did really, really well in the 2017 cycle. And after the 2021 cycle, he'd be between those two massive runs. He went from being a cab driver to being a billionaire. Now he's very smart. He's abnormally smart. So VLaunch is actually founded by him and his partner, Mo, who is from Germany, which Mo I've talked to, actually. I don't know him super well. Cool guy. He has a, a channel in German. I don't speak any German. And so I don't watch Mo's channel, but they're both very, very bright. And they founded VLaunch together. However, all launch pads have suffered during this bear market because in order to get projects launching through a launch pad, you have to hold their tokens. Well, nobody's clamoring over holding their tokens because the launches aren't going very well because when you launch a new project's tokens in a bear market, nobody cares. But as the bull market comes in, launch pads, especially the top launch pads, do incredibly well. And Chris has some of the best connections in the industry. And Chris is an exceptionally bright guy that researches at a level that most people will never do. And so now I don't know if he puts in the same level of research he used to. In fact, he probably doesn't, but probably he doesn't have to research at the same level to get close to the level of information he used to, because over that time you develop instincts and you see certain patterns. So he doesn't have to put in 10 hours of research. He can get similar levels with just an hour or two of looking at something. So we'll see how they do. But I'm, I like him 
In fact, part of what I created this channel, I somewhat based on some of the things that he did because I love that he got deep into the research on projects. Now, he still has a YouTube channel, but he only covers Bitcoin trading on leverage, which almost nobody is successful at. Now, he's successful at that, but like um, I know people who try to follow him. And because he covers, he releases pretty much every day. And the people who even try to follow him and do what he does, that way get wrecked. And he doesn't cover altcoins at all anymore. That doesn't mean he doesn't invest in them. He doesn't cover them on YouTube. And it is a lot of work. And when you're a billionaire, he doesn't have to. And yet he doesn't even have to cover the leverage trades on Bitcoin. And he still does. I think it's for fun and for connections because money, he doesn't need to work again a day in his life. Um, but yeah, he created uh, V Launch so that he could launch some projects and further expand his connections. I think so. I'm a big fan of what's going on with V Launch, and that was a little bit of history on them. Their market cap at 7.8 million is decent. Maybe it gets cheaper when the bull market comes. V Launch will probably go crazy. So for me, it's a buy. Um, and I hope it comes down more. All right, let's take a look at Senate. Senate, I included in this myself. I put it on the list because mm, I like that price. Now, I'm going to share an insider update that I got from um, the founder. And this is what he said. Exciting stuff is happening. Five games in production. Luxury brand joint venture game distribution platform launch partnership with Consensus and Linea, BNB game launch soon as well. Book releases on Amazon, D game gaming festival at activation roundtable game test with our community members and many many more. Check out our Twitter for all the information. Now keep in mind we only raised seventeen point five million USD for the whole publishing company, which builds. Multiple games, lore, book, blockchain architecture, and more using not the biggest budget. I believe we do very efficient work, but it's up to our community to judge that, not us. Um, I think he hit out of the park there. He's very, very right. They raised far less funds than most games, and yet they've released so much more than most games have. And I think he's very efficient with his funds, and I find him an effective leader. However, the price... If you're not watching the fundamentals, that price point is scary, isn't it, Paul? It is for me, yeah. Uh, that's why it's such an interesting channel, isn't it? You get to hear about how good fundamentals are are not reflected in the prices yet. And so this goes on the radar. But for me, it's a sell uh, because it's below its prior support. And until it gets above the... 200 day moving average which is this purple line um or does something else then i i need to you know i i that's the trend so the trend is down i have to go with the trend um hopefully i'm wrong but it's had a little bounce here into resistance from the prior uh low but again that's that's not enough for me to get in at the very least, if I if I wanted to be trigger happy on it and get in quicker, then maybe I'd use this line, like a a close, uh, say a one week close over this this resistance line that's working here. Um, that that could be something for a buy signal. But I, it, overall, I'm trying to pick the low, and for me, that's not that's not how I. I can view the chart. It needs to show some support. Now, if we're back into over the 200 day moving average here in say three, six weeks or, or, or more, um, then the potential for this to be a massive base is goes up a long way. So the probability of this being a base makes it extremely interesting. Um, so further down the line, I definitely want to come back to it um, because it would be a massive base, which would imply a really big rally. So for the moment, it's a sell um, until it proves otherwise. But definitely want awesome. to say it again. We don't often get a sell from Paul. So, that yeah. Um, 
it it is a concerning chart and be warned like it might go cheaper i mean it's showing that it wants to it broke its previous lows i just there we go so we're even lower than so the previous lows was at 2.7 cents it hit 2.3 and usually that means it will come down more now keep in mind look at this total supply versus max supply is 300 million tokens and there's 70 only 75 million roughly in circulation or just under 25 percent so maybe there's still some token vesting going on that's pushing it down further and i welcome that because this market cap is under a two million dollar market cap now if this game survives the bear market and they do a good job rolling out games that people want to play blockchain games that people want to play then this market cap could go into the hundreds of millions or billions. So I get excited at market caps like this. And so I did recently buy some more in this realm, not knowing if it would break to the upside or break to the downside. And like I shared earlier, sometimes it breaks to the downside and I don't get mad. I get excited because I still believe my thesis that this game will, number one, survive the bear market. Think that'll probably happen and if it does if they have a pretty decent product and i'm seeing good signs that way then it will probably massively pump and so when this kind of thing happens i get super excited so for me it's between a buy it would it's buy a little bit and wait a little bit just hope it comes down more and then buy some more and then possibly buy a lot so um I'm excited with where the price is going and that's why I included in this because I'm happy it got cheaper than what my recent buys were, <laughs> which is weird. People are like, oh my gosh, the price reversed on you. Are you mad? I'm like, no, this is Christmas. Kind of like when I was buying Cardano at like seven cents and then like five cents and then went to three cents and people are like, are you mad? And I'm like, no, why would I be mad? The fundamentals haven't changed. The price has just gotten cheaper. It's like going to the store. And it's like, oh, man, it's 50% off today. Are you disappointed? <laughs> no, because I was going to buy it anyway. But now I get to buy it 50% cheaper. So that's how I think. Uh, yes, Wales team. Uh, Iagon was already covered. He just missed it. Um, but you, on the recording, you actually on YouTube can scroll back a little bit and I'll let you catch it. Um, all right. Let's see. Our next one was. Is it bumper? It is bumper, which has some yeah. interesting price action going on. Yeah. So I think we're talking about it last week, the sell the rumor or uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact. And definitely that's, that seems to have played out. I mean, overall structurally it's still um, in an upward trend or at least basing. I mean, it's an upward trend from November last year. It's following on pretty much from what the majors are doing as i've said many times before i think this will move up or have its best opportunities when the majors are trending higher it's a bull market play in my view um <clears throat> which hasn't actually happened yet and it's a, an ongoing developing macro theme so pullback yeah it's a bit aggressive it's a bit aggressive so um i think we've got to watch that there's support support coming in at around four and a half or four point six cents. If it breaks that, hmm, it could look a little more uh, a bit of an air pocket potentially for cheaper levels. But we'll take this one step at a time. Overall, it's still in a bull phase. We're getting a sharp correction, but that's okay. Um, so I, I view it as a buy. I would just watch if it breaks this 4.6 4 cents level. Um, that that wouldn't be good for me. I would be thinking, mm, how much more does it want to come down? Um, where I would have liked it to have gone, because it made this left shoulder head, right shoulder, broke out. This was the breakout point at 8.5 cents. Went 1, 2, made higher resistance at 10 cents that is such an important resistance point now for a major bull phase um <clears throat> and it's moving away from it so hopefully we'll dig its heels in soon and we'll get a move back up again and as it approaches that 10.6 um 
you know, resistance, uh, the closer it gets to it, if it's synchronizing with the majors, it will look really good. It look really interesting. Um, but for the for the moment, very short term, I, I would I would wait if I was looking to buy it. I would just wait um, because it could get a bit cheaper mm -hmm. while this correction plays out. But again, if I could put a trading hat on and then a strategic hat on strategically, it's, it's still in the buy camp because the market's turned around and it's in an upward trend from last year. Yes. Great points. Um, so like, like we talked about before this happened, that a lot of times people buy the rumor, but then when the news or the fact or, the event happens, it then dumps off. And it, it's kind of like this letdown effect. It's kind of like, oh my gosh, you're waiting for this Disneyland trip. And the anticipation is part of it. If you're like a kid and you're like, oh my gosh, Disneyland's coming up. And then kind of the letdown effect you have after. So that happens psychologically. And there's also people understand this pattern too. So a lot of times they sell into that. And so then it goes down further. And I think probably it will correct down more. Now, is this a buy or a sell to me? Well, I, I like to identify what I feel are buy zones where I feel like fundamentally it's undervalued. Like last bear market, my buy zone for Cardano was under 13 cents was when I started accumulating. And when it went down cheaper, I was happy, not disappointed because my thesis was in the coming bull run that Cardano would do tremendously well and that it was massively undervalued even at 13 cents. But I only bought a little bit at 13 cents when it went down some more at 11 cents, I bought some more and then at seven cents and then at five and then at three. And at three, I loaded the boats as much as I could. So is bumper in my buy zone? For me, my buy zone on bumper is anything under 10 cents I think is cheap. Am I glad that it is down 50% from that? I'm ecstatic that it's down 50% from that, but I think it's probably going to go down a bit more than that. And maybe I'm just being hopeful on that because my thesis on bumper is that going into the bull run in the bull run bumper does tremendously well. Now it did launch its main net and they are a strategic partner of the channel. So maybe I'm biased, but I only take strategic partners. I, I reject most of them. Um, I get a lot of offers for sponsorships, which I've turned down most all of them. Very few I say yes to and strategic relationships. Very few I say yes to. So bumper was one that I could do because I believe in where this project is going. I love the leadership behind it. And I think that they're what they're building potentially solves a number of major problems in hedging against risk. So I'm excited with what they're doing. Well, their mainnet launch and people are like, oh, their mainnet is live, but it didn't go huge. It doesn't have massive amounts of cash in it. It was a failure. And it's like, it's just early. It's just early. Most people aren't aware of Bumper yet. And it made me think of when Axie Infinity, which later became huge, but it was very, very small for a very long time. That when I talked to people about Axie Infinity, nobody had heard of them. And the general crypto market was completely unaware of them. And in fact, when they launched their game, well, nobody was playing it. And people that were like, had bought the land like I did were like, oh, look, nobody's playing it. This game is going to fail, da, da, da. Fast forward 12 months from there, and Axie Infinity became big. And then six months later, Axie Infinity became huge. So is Bumper failed? No, their main net's now live and they have a working product that's out that people can use. And they did get 50,000 liquidity within the first day, which was pretty good. And especially for the type of market that we're in now, hopefully over time, they gain a lot of traction and it continues to grow. But I remember the time that Uniswap, one of the biggest tools used in DeFi was like nothing and nobody had heard of it. Nobody used it. So when I see Bumper going through like relative obscurity that a lot of people don't know it yet, that doesn't worry me. Is that a problem that has to be addressed over the coming year for it to do well? Yes. And I've seen that over and over again. If their product is as good as they believe it is, oh, it will get noticed and it will go huge. All right. Um, for me, it's a buy at this price and it's buy a little bit and hope it gets even cheaper because <laughs> that's how I am. I like big sales. 
Let's take a look at our last one, Juan Shane, and then we'll see if we have any time for the viewer suggestions. So one chain is on this trend line and it's been in the range for quite some time. Let's face it, uh, sort of May 22. It's been oscillating around the central point of uh, 21 cents, uh, had a great breakout and then it's fallen back again. I think this is a sentiment driven market. Um, what Once the bull market gets going, there's no reason why they shouldn't join it um for the moment it's it's sitting in quite an important level from a short-term perspective because it should find su some support here um the next levels are at 16 cents and then well 16 uh 82 and then just below that 1647 um if it breaks any of those it could well drop down to the next support level but for the moment i mean that's only if it does that where it is now it's it's kind of um what we've got is a series of of lower highs and a series of higher lows so it's kind of compressing into this point where it, it will want to break out now given that the broader market is potentially getting ready to break out and this will do very well when volumes go up i suggest for me it could be quite a good support point now if i bought it i'd hold it if i hadn't bought it i might be waiting a little bit just to see if it bounces from here can break this resistance line and then take us to the next level so i'd i would buy it on a break of this um resistance line but if i if i held it already i would just continue to hold it so strategically it's a buy long term short term i think it's a wait just because it's sitting on this this important level here i just want to see it react to that and if i was trading it the way i would trade it is i would wait for that line to break um just to confirm that this part of the trend is over and it's now moving into what could be a very nice base this base is getting bigger there is some disappointment when shorter bases break and then the market comes down it's like oh, okay it hasn't worked but in a good bull market which potentially is what's coming um, the bases get bigger. So one smaller base fails and it turns into a much bigger base. So it can be a bit frustrating, but that's you know how markets are. Um, so yeah, I'm sure we're going to keep looking at it and we'll look at it again in a, in a few weeks' time. But for the moment, that's the way it looks for me. Yeah. Uh, one chain I'm a big fan of. They're also a strategic partner with the channel. Um, I'm a big fan of them because fundamentally they're solving some good problems and their one bridge has been uh, complete for a while now. And now there's sufficient liquidity. You can bridge between all these different chains. And I love the bridge. Now the technology behind it, which people don't often think about, they just think, does it work? And how much is the cost? They don't think about the technology behind it until the bridge that they're using gets hacked. But the way one chain set it up, they're just less susceptible to most ty types of hacking attacks. And so the technology behind it is solid, which leads to them having better partnerships. And their bridge that they have now, I use their bridge exclusively, not even because they're a strategic partner, but because their bridge is just better. And if it wasn't better, like I would tell you because uh, but now that their bridge is so good over the last number of months, I've used it exclusively as I send money between the different chains. And there are a lot of chains these days and they can send funds between most of them. So their technology I've been getting I've been a believer in their their core thesis since 2017 when I first heard about it. What I'm seeing come together for them is very exciting for me. I get super excited about it and that I because I, I tend to look at substance and I like substance. Does their idea work? Is it doing a good job? Is it doing it cheaper than most other places? Is it doing more effectively than most other places? Because if the substance is there, the hype will usually follow. And so that's what I look for. I like to look at when the substance is solid, but the hype hasn't followed yet. And so on chain, I think is at that place. It gets me super excited. Now the market cap is very cheap right now. It's just 36 million for the type of project that they're at. 
that is massively underpriced. And most of their tokens, 93%, are in circulation. Very good position to be in. Now, this Friday, I will be doing a live stream and we'll be giving away 500 bumper and 500 wand. So make sure you join us for that because we'll have some really good rewards. Um, this Friday, we'll be doing a live stream. So join us for that and win one of the giveaways. Now, hint, follow on chain and follow bumpers. Twitter, for better chances, if you follow those closely, you'll probably be able to answer the questions faster and hopefully win. All right. Well, that's our suggestions. We have time to take one viewer comment or two. Yeah, sure. All right. Let me scroll up and see what our first comment was. Um, I know there was one and at least another one. Let's see. What was it, though? Can you review Epic Prime Partnership with over half of the top AAA gaming companies? Interesting. Um Let's review Epic, E-P-I-K. And while you're pulling up the chart on that, Paul, I'm going to see if I can find the announcement that he's referring to. Yeah, so trend-wise, it's down. I think you can pretty much guess what I'm going to say here. At the very least, at best, it's a wait. Um Really, it's a sell because it's broken its prior low and we're into new low territory. Um, if it can recover this three zero, sorry, two zeros and a four level, um, close over it for a couple of weeks, break this downward trend line, then I can consider it uh, potentially, possibly a buy, um, but but not here. I mean, above, really above this this. Um, this support around 0044, I would say is more of a neutral zone. Um, if I was strategically buying it, for me, it would be a break of this really strong resistance level where you can see how many times it tried to break it and it didn't manage to do it. So if it gets through there, that's my tripwire. Overall, this trend has been pretty much down unfortunately apart from this attempted breakout here um and that was looking like quite a nice base was building too so it's a bit of a shame really so for the moment technically until this downward trend type signature changes it i, I would be on the sidelines at the very least yeah um let me pull up that. So for you, it is definitely a weight on the sidelines. Cutting price action doesn't scare me. Blockchain gaming, all the hype has deflated out of the market for blockchain gaming, which is a situation I love. Now, it will come back in the narrative. In fact, I've seen more justification or more proof of that or evidence of that with what's happened with Counter-Strike Go and their loot crates. Um, because I think partial ownership was massively successful with a name that people recognize and trusted. When when the FOMO comes into the blockchain gaming space, you'll see a lot of these games do tremendously well. And Epic Prime is well positioned for that. I didn't find the press release that I was looking for. Now, this is one of Animoca Brands' portfolio, and the Animoca Brands has a substantial investment into this, possibly even part ownership. And Animoca Brands, well, really, really, Yatsu, who runs that, is a very, very smart investor. But that doesn't mean everything that Animoca Brands invests into is going to succeed, though it does mean it's pretty well vetted and probably has better chances. Um, I can't say I'm in love with the graphics level that they're displaying here, but I, I'm not all that familiar with, well, interesting. Uh, supported by advisors from some of the best companies in the world. So advisors from Pokemon, My Little Pony, Nintendo, and Tetris. I do like where its market cap is at. Um, it's down to 3.6 million, its previous highs, it's down 95% from its previous highs and probably going to get even cheaper. So for me, it would be starting to get in the buy zone and starting to accumulate. I don't know that I own any of this yet. I have looked at it. Maybe I'd surprise myself and I own a little bit. 
Um, if I own any, it's not a substantive amount yet, but um, probably this trend is going to continue further down. And uh, but even at the price it's at, it would be a tiny pickup for me. And then just hoping it continues down cheaper and cheaper, and then I would buy more. Good suggestion. What's funny is one of our other viewers um, asked us to look at Epic, but a different Epic, Epic Cash. Let's see. I think there was another suggestion that came in prior to that, though. So let me scroll up in the Jessens. No, that was the next one. Epic. That's E P I C. Epic Cash. Funny that both those got suggested today and they have similar names. Interesting chart on that. So, previous highs during the 2021. This is the later bull run. This is the Meta Facebook changing their name to Meta part of the bull run which happened in October. And you see this totally pump with that news. And then it's come back down. Let's see. I don't know that I know what Epic Cash does. Welcome. Oh, okay. We're going to have time to watch that video. And this doesn't tell me all that much. So, huh. Epic Cash in Nigeria, YouTuber finds Epic Cash buys $12,000. I can't say I'm in love with the YouTube or the website, though it does, it is very informational, which is cool and it has all these links on it. Uh, interesting. Um, what are you seeing on the price charts, Paul? It's, um, I mean, it's it's been bouncing around this, support area for quite some time hasn't it so um speculatively you could have a go at it i suppose um i'd have to would i like this compared to something else i'm not sure but the big breakout point is at two dollars and it's fair it's way off there so we've had this downward trend let's get it in the log scale so we can see it a bit better we've had a downward trend <clears throat> from this high and it's gone into a range so it's kind of bouncing along the the uh the base of the range really so <clears throat> what looked like two dollars on the previous chart um was actually we can see more clearly is 1.8 dollars so that would be a, that's the breakout point um yeah i i i guess it's it, we one could nibble it here but i'm not sure whether it's any better than you know something else as it were but if if i had to make a decision on it right now i'd say i'd, I'd wait um but if it crossed 1.8 that would be my buy point so i did a little bit more research on this and was able to find some information that was helpful um so i i didn't see it before but that's one of the downsides of add right so is that i sometimes can't see stuff why want to let me click on that? But essentially, Epic Cash um, is an implementation of Mim Mimblewimble fort from Grin, which is cool. And, and so it makes sense why um, they're very functional based, right? So the website isn't even very pretty. It's very functional based because uh, Mimblewimble and Grin were also very functional based, like essentially programmers trying to find better ways of doing a cryptocurrency cash. Um, I'm not very bullish on, I feel like Bitcoin with Lightning Network is going to own that space. But that did actually give this project a lot more credibility in my mind, seeing their background, that it was an implementation of Mimblewimble, which was forked from Grin. Um, and I hope it's successful, but I'm not going to buy it based on where the price is. Just it's not that it's bad. And if I didn't have many of the other options that I know more substantively about that I'm interested in, then possibly this would become an option. But we're operating in a thing where there's lots and lots and lots of good projects, many great projects. And I'm trying to make my best guesses at which ones are great over which are just good. 
And so Epic Cash, maybe I'm wrong on this, but for me, I would just rate it as good. For me, it wouldn't be a buy or a wait. Um, just because the narrative it's in, I, I just feel like competing against Bitcoin and also in some ways ETH for the currency type of realm or the store of value realm. Boy, that's a big whale of a competitor that you're competing against. And because the market cap is probably much, much lower, in fact, the market cap's at 13 million here. Um, that doesn't mean it can't vastly outperform those. That just hurts its long-term viability of whether it survives or not. And that's just my view based on minimal amounts of research. So take that for what it's worth, which is minimal amounts of research. Perhaps the um, person that suggested it might know 100 times more on the fundamental side, and there might be good reasons to be very bullish on it that I'm just not aware of yet. Um, some other comments. Bugsy, something to keep in mind if you go into bumper with a small amount, look out for gas fees because it's on ETH. They are on some other exchanges now too, but yes. Um, yeah, a lot of talk about Bumper and what's going on here. Wales team said tried out Bumper at their booth. It was nice. Um, did you have a chance to move? There we go. Um, all right. Well, Paul, thank you much for joining us. Yeah, no problem. It's uh, always interesting. And uh, thanks for all the comments. And um, I'll see you next week. All right. Well, exciting times in crypto, though it doesn't feel exciting. That's okay. I get excited when I see this kind of thing happening in the market because I know what later follows this. It's hard to know exactly when it's going to happen. And if I had a magic crystal ball that I could actually see the future, I'd tell you. But I don't. So part of the game is having tenaciousness and being patient and waiting. Some would call that faith. I would just call it a strongly educated guess because there's, I don't know, there's always that chance that nobody wakes up tomorrow because who knows, some other major asteroid crashes into the planet and we all die. So there's no guarantees of the future. You just have to make your best educated guess. And that's what investing is all about. Thanks so much for joining us. This wrap, you guys know what the wrap is all about. Enjoy, and we'll see you all soon. Came into the space, chasing all of the games, chasing the pumps and all of the hype trains. But like in life, uh, shit, right before you could, was told to buy when it was pouring like a rain, making sure. I buy when it's down, don't chase the posts that I miss, uh. Cause I always made the time in mind I stick the one out cause I'm patient like that And I'll wait for the right time I'll sell when it's high, I'll buy when it's low They call me rich, they call me smart I'm just a rainmaker running the show Calculated investments I don't leave with my heart The principles are simple, they're leaving a lot Buy when it's boring, just gotta be smart I sell when it's hype, like all the channels they pump it That's when I was selling your parabolic and dump it They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own start I'm with the future, learning the past Makes the time fly by, years going so fast The game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, haters asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh, Time is never better, but time like the present This next five years is a gift and it's feeling like heaven I'm committed to learn Studying to know that nothing comes easy, but when knowledge the game show Thinking at this wrong because soon will come a bear market. Learning and growing, and when it's slow, would be the target. They say it's come out, Bitcoin is dead. The massive decreases can get to your head. Sticking around, the time is better. Strong like that, I'll let the others be fretters. Two years time, the ball will bring back the games. The makes it worth it because here comes the rain. So let's go, rainmakers, let's make it all happen. The goal of the hate, they the haters be crappy. I'm here for five years, let's do this together. The time is right, the time could be better They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own start I'm with the future, learning the past Made the time fly by, years going so fast This game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, hey, it's asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh, Haters be 
hating, the time to slow down no. Dressing what to say when I'm wearing my crown my They're chasing crown. green candles like someone who was new I got a vision that was bigger helping me to push through, push through. I'm still human and sometimes it is rough and that's what makes me special, simply I stay tough Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh.